Hey everybody, we're going to do a pretty short and sweet PFSense limiter tutorial today. I'm just going to briefly go over how to create limiters uh, and how to assign traffic to those limiters uh, and then test the limiter to make sure that it's working. So first thing we can do is uh, have a look at the PFSense documentation provided by NetGate. This is pretty detailed. It goes over basically everything you need to know. It's very dense, but hopefully the steps today will be very short and easy to understand. So the next thing I would do is just gather some information about your network connection if you don't already know it. Um, you can do this by running a speed test. Uh, this is one that I ran earlier. Um, you can also go to your internet service provider and they may or may not have some information buried on their web page uh, that will give you clues as to what uh, speeds that you should be getting. Um, we currently have the NBN tier 100, so uh, basically it's saying download speeds 88 megabits per second, upload speeds 20 megabits per second uh, with this little asterisk. Um, we're actually getting pretty good speeds as you can see here, 87 uh, that goes up into the 90s usually, uh, and then 33 uh, this is around usually around 35 or so. It never actually gets up to 100 uh, and 100 down and 40 up uh, as the plan is actually advertised. So once you've gathered that information, you kind of have an idea of just how much you want to limit your uh, devices on your network. So what we want to do next is uh, create the limiter. So we can go to firewall and then traffic shaper and then limiters. So here what we want to do is create a new limiter. Uh, make sure this is checked here. Uh, this has got me a few times because I forget to check enable that and then after I get done doing all the configuration uh, I realize that uh, it's not enabled. So what we'll do is we'll create the download limiter first. So I'll just set this up. So basically, uh, the name I'll just say download limit 50 megabits. So roughly half of the uh, connection. So we drop this type down to megabits and we'll do 50 there. So you can um, scroll this down. All this information uh, can stay the same. This is where some of the more uh, configurable algorithms and schedulers and everything are located, but we're, we're just going to take the defaults. So hit save there. You don't have to immediately hit apply changes. Uh, this will queue your changes and then you, once you make all your changes, you can hit apply there. So what we'll do is create a second limiter for our upload. Again, make sure to enable that. And then we'll create an upload limit of 10 megabits. So we'll again select this 10 megabits uh, there. All the default values, hit save, and then we can go ahead and apply our changes there. The next thing we can do here, and this is kind of an optional step uh, if you just only want to limit one device, but uh, I found that you know, I have multiple devices on my network that I want to limit. So what we'll do is we'll actually create an alias. So you can go into firewall and then aliases. And you want to be on the IP tab here. You can create aliases for all sorts of other things here. But what we'll do is uh, go ahead and click add. And so in this, we'll do speed limited hosts for the name. You can name this whatever you like. We'll keep it on hosts, so this will make an alias uh, for a list of hosts. So just to make it easy, I'll put the machine that I'm currently on, and we'll go ahead and create that alias. Hit apply there. You can see we have the name, speed limited hosts, uh, and the machine that I'm on. Now we can create multiple, if you go ahead and hit add host down here, you can actually put multiple in there and they will be there. So what we want to do now is uh, create our rule to assign traffic to the limiter. 
So we can go to Firewall and then Rules. You want to make sure in this instance that you are on the LAN tab. So what we'll do is go ahead and click Add here. So you want Pass. You want it on the LAN interface. I'm using uh, IPv4. You can use IPv6 if you like. We want to select the protocol to be any to catch all protocols in this rule. Under source, we want to select single host or alias. This is where you can either put the actual IP address of the machine or device, or you can put in the alias. This it can be uh, dynamically populated as soon as you start typing in the, the name, it will pull out uh, the potential alias and you can just click on it there. So you can put a description here, I'll just leave that blank for now, but you want to uh, click on display advanced for advanced options. All of this is going to be defaults, but we're going to scroll all the way down to input output pipe. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. As it says here, I'll try to explain it a little better. It's, it's kind of unintuitive the way that it works, depending on the interface that you are setting this up on. So from the PFSense documentation, it says, as a note, remember that in and out are from the perspective of that interface on the firewall. When choosing limiters on the LAN interface, out is download and in is upload. So if you were on the WAN interface, it would be the opposite. So download would be in and upload would be out. But since we're configuring this on the LAN interface, the in pipe is actually going to be set to upload. So this is where the limiters are here. You can see the two that we created earlier. So we select upload for the in pipe. This is in here and this is out over here. So for the out pipe, we will we'll select the uh, download limit. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Basically what this is going to do is any packet that is caught by this rule is going to be passed through that limiter. So we'll just go ahead and save this here. We can see our, our newly created rule there. You want to have that up toward the top. Um, like it says here, you know, you can drag these to change the order, but think of it as uh, all of your packets and everything, everything traversing your network actually goes through, at least on this inter particular interface of LAN, will go through top down. So it will hit this rule. If you have any rule that's above another rule that, that it gets actioned on, you it might not go to the other, any other rule below that. So you, you it's very important to kind of keep your hierarchy here, your order. Um, so we can go ahead and uh, hit apply there. So basically now that we have our limiter set up and we have our rule set up, we really just need to check to see if the rule's actually working and the limiter's actually working. So how we can do that is a, is a couple different ways. One, the easiest way is just to run another speed test here. So I'll keep this one open and I'll run a second speed test here. So you can see we're being limited. And you can see we're being limited there as well. So, you know, if you remember, uh, we set up a 50 megabit download and we set up a 10 megabit upload. So that is working there. And you can also test it um, once, you've, once you've confirmed that's working. You could also go in here and actually disable this rule, hit apply, and once again, run your speed test. So now we should actually be getting our full bandwidth.
It looks like we're back to normal there. So that pretty much covers it. I know that was very simple. There's a, there's a lot more that you can do, a lot more advanced things you can do, um, but that's just the really short and sweet version. Um, if there's something I didn't cover or there are any questions that you have, just leave a comment and uh, I will try to get to that. Um, I plan on doing more of these tutorial videos in the future, so if there's anything that you want to see, if you're curious about PFSense and, and how to configure it, um, I like to say it's like the Swiss Army knife of uh, networking. You, there's so much that you can do with it. It's, it's really open-ended. So uh, yeah, just let me know, and uh, I hope this was helpful. I'll see you guys on the next one.